<clears throat> All right, everybody. It is uh, January 15th. This is uh, Michael Watson, and this is the IACT IMDHA uh, Presenters Series. We are gearing up for the uh, Hypno Expo 2017 in Daytona Beach, which is the 19th to the 21st of May uh, this coming year. And uh, this is the first of 15 Sundays of uh, presentations like this one, where we'll be talking to the folks who are doing um, presentations uh, for the um, uh, for the Hypno Expo pre and post uh, conference programs in particular, the folks that are doing the full day programs. Uh, tonight we were originally scheduled to have George Bien on the line and uh, George wasn't able to be with us this evening and uh, we've made an alteration to the schedule. Uh, hopefully most of you got the announcement about that. So uh, I'm uh, fortunate to be joined this evening by Roy Hunter who is uh, available and willing to make the switch for us and uh, we really appreciate it. Um, I, I want to say one thing really quick about Roy, and that is that of all of the people that I know in all of the hypnosis organizations, um, I think that you are, Roy, the one that I have known the longest. Um, I, I, uh, I, I made contact with Roy uh, when we were still typing at a DOS prompt on uh, some kind of uh, chat rooms or, or vehicles in cyberspace when the World Wide Web was just a worldwide baby. And uh, and uh, and Roy was involved in the all that goes back a few years. That goes back a few years. So uh, yeah, so I'm thinking that I've known you certainly more than 20 years. Um, in fact, uh, maybe uh, maybe getting dangerously close to 30 at this point. So uh, so Roy, uh, what can I say about you? Um, I, I, Roy has been uh, was certified as a hypnotherapist. We'll give you the official stuff by Charles Tebbets uh, back in 1983 and uh, studied. Uh, um, I started teaching rather professional hypnosis in 1987. He's, he's taught workshops in 17 different countries. Uh, he's the published author of several highly praised hypnosis books and was recognized by three different organizations for life achievement in hypnotherapy. He's a life diplomate of IMDHA. And uh, gosh, every time I talk to you, I'm actually looking, Roy, at your last year's biography. And every time I talk to you, there's uh, so much more to say. I know that you have a new book that's just come out recently, for example, that uh, uh, I don't want to, I don't want to misspeak the title. It is, uh, uh, would you tell us about your new book? The Art of Spiritual Hypnosis, Accessing Divine Wisdom. And that's uh, contributed to from 20, over 24 different authors from around the world. Highly praised hypnotherapists have contributed some amazing case summaries of clients who made life-changing breakthroughs as a result of being able to access divine wisdom during hypnosis. So that makes it a very unique book, different than uh, any other book I've written. Lovely, lovely. Because I didn't really write most of it. Most of it was written by the contributing authors, and some of their case summaries literally brought me to tears when I was editing the book and organizing it. Sure, and now uh, and that's that's readily available from Amazon, right? And uh, and of course, uh, uh, you're going to have it with you uh, in Daytona. Uh, but for those yes. of you who can't wait quite that long, uh, you can zoom out to uh, to Amazon.com and uh, and get a copy of Roy's book uh, almost immediately. They'll they'll bring it to your house with a drone, perhaps. <laughs> <laughs> they bring it with you to uh, IMBHA IAC Hypno Expo, and I'll be happy to sign it for you. There you go. Lovely. Lovely. All right. Um, well, so Roy is going to be presenting um, the parts therapy training and, uh, and then a parts, uh, parts therapy trainer training uh, the two days before and the two days after the weekend of the conference. And uh, we're really looking forward to that. Uh, so why don't we, uh, why don't we get right after it, Roy? And, uh, and if you're, if you're ready, I'd, like to just explain to people who may not have a full understanding just what exactly is parts therapy. The way I explain it to a client when parts therapy is indicated is we wear different hats. For example, after a long work day, I put on my inner child cap, but my clients see my hypnotherapy cap. If my wife and I want to go out to dinner and a movie, then I put on my inner romantic hat. And then I'll say to a, a client, 
seeing me for weight loss, for example, there's a part of you that has motivated you to invest your time and money for these sessions to deal with uh, your eating habits or other issues associated with weight. But there's another part of you that wants to keep on overeating or you wouldn't need my services in the first place. So I will be like a mediator and guide you into hypnosis and call out those two parts of your subconscious that are in conflict. So it's really like a form of mediation uh, instead of mediating with two different people. I'm helping the client mediate between two conflicting parts of the inner mind. Hence the title of my uh, hardbound book from Crown House Publishing, uh, Hypnosis for Inner Conflict Resolution, Introducing Parts Therapy. And it's hard to believe that was published way back in 2005 because uh, it's almost 12 years have passed since that book uh, came out. And that's been my visa to teach parts therapy around the globe. And by the way, I guess I need to update my uh, bio because it's now 20 countries that I've uh, had the privilege of teaching in in the past decade. Wow, another three just this past year. It's been an incredible privilege and an adventure. And to me, it's an honor to be invited to travel and teach parts therapy, whether it's here in America or uh, overseas. Well, great. So, so let's talk about the origin of parts therapy. Who originated parts therapy? Where does, it, where does this come from? Charles Tebbets, uh, like the work of uh, Paul Federn, uh, based on the concept uh, that Freud discussed also, that we have an id and a super id, et cetera, only um, Charlie came to the conclusion that we have a number of different uh, parts of the subconscious, which he decided instead of giving names to them, like uh, some of the other variations of parts therapy do, uh, he decided to facilitate it in a client-centered manner by asking each part to give itself a name or identity. How would you like to be called or what name or title shall I call you? Mm -hmm. And simultaneously, while Charles Tebbets was pioneering parts therapy, John and Helen Watkins from uh, the mainstream healthcare community were pioneering the same thing, only they called it uh, ego state therapy. And they also, according to their protege, Gordon Emerson, who is a psychologist living in Australia, uh, their protege, uh, anyway, Dr. Emerson said that they also patterned ego state therapy after the work of Paul Federn and uh, Freud. So they were on parallel paths at virtually the same instant if you look at thousands of years of recorded history. And I find that more than just coincidental. To the best of my knowledge, Charlie did not know about the work of Watkins and Watkins. And to the best of my knowledge, and uh, I asked Gordon Emerson this personally when I met him years ago, Watkins and Watkins originated on their own the concept of ego state therapy uh, without knowing about Charlie's work. So they were walking parallel paths. The uh, Watkins for the uh, mainstream healthcare community and Charles Tebbets for the hypnotherapy community. Since then, I've learned there are lots of other variations. For example, I know Michael, you're into NLP mm -hmm. and NLP has promoted a six-step reframe, which is really a grandchild of the late Virginia Satir, who had the parts party, and then she uh, met uh, either Bandler or Grinder or both of them. Mm -hmm. And for a while, they had parts integration, which was the child of Satir's parts party. And now the six-step reframe is the grandchild of Virginia Satir's work. Then you have voice dialogue, which uh, was popular back in the 80s, I hardly ever hear of it nowadays. And then I learned of a new variation just a few years ago called subliminal therapy. That was pioneered four decades ago by Dr. Edwin Yeager, who was with a, a psychiatry department at the University of San Diego. Now this, I have to say, because when I got a personal email from Dr. Yeager, I actually was thrilled literally to the point of tears because as a man who is now in his early 90s, he was diagnosed with Alzheimer's a couple years ago. And by becoming the client 
one of his former subliminal therapy students, a psychologist from Germany, did subliminal therapy on Dr. Yeager. And not only did it stop the progress of Alzheimer's, it completely reversed it, which to me provides hope that perhaps through parts therapy and its variations, I would love to see somebody who's really involved in the medical community use either parts therapy or one of its variations to find out if there's hope for other Alzheimer's patients. And I, I was so happy for Dr. Yeager. It just yes. uh, literally thrilled me to tears because one of my favorite uncles uh, died of dementia decades ago. And I would love to go back in time knowing what I know now and ask him some questions. Sure. And isn't it and wonderful during that it, seven years I worked part-time for Franciscan Hospice, it was discouraging the number of times I went out to see a patient who had Alzheimer's or dementia. And it was harder on the spouse sometimes than it seemed to be on the patient. Isn't it wonderful, though, to discover all these, these applications after the fact? Uh, what, yes. what, what great things it is that... Uh, Know, that uh, that we're contributing, you know. Uh, Charlie sort of passed this on to you and asked you to continue his work. And and uh, have you revised parts therapy since uh, since you first started working with it? It's always a work in progress. I have made numerous revisions over the years. The biggest revision was in 1990 when uh, I uh, told Charles Tevis that I was going to teach it as a mediator and not as an arbitrator. He taught it as an arbitrator, but he was a great debater. In fact, he was a debate champion in the early part of the 20th century. So he would call out the parts, listen to what each part presented to decide, and then he would tell the parts what to do and debate with them. Uh, I lost the great debate, as Charlie called it, more than once and had several sessions go south. So experience taught me that uh, it's better to mediate than it is to arbitrate. Occasionally through the years when I've taught workshops, I've had either an arbitrator or a mediator in the uh, classroom. And more than uh, once, they have uh, validated that there's a big difference between mediation and arbitration. In fact, about 10 years ago, a professional mediator said, the biggest difference is when you arbitrate, both sides leave somewhat disappointed. But when you mediate a successful mediation, all sides are happy, even though they had uh, give and take. Right. And oftentimes, I have found through the years when a client has, for example, had a big struggle over quitting smoking, that sometimes through parts therapy, they end up smoking um, uh, five to 10 cigarettes a day and quit gradually over a period of months or wait a year or two before they quit totally. But that's a vast improvement over being a chain smoker. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. Now, wh one of the questions that I was going to ask you, and, and uh, you started to mention some of these other things. You mentioned six-step reframing, for example, and, and other variations and other techniques that are out there. Um, what is it that makes part therapy, as you do it, specifically different than, than similar techniques? That's an excellent question. Thank you for asking it. Um, unlike some of the variations, I ask each part to tell me its name or title that it wishes to be called, and I ask the part to tell me what job it does for the client so I know that I have uh, an appropriate part out rather than a part that just wants to talk. Sure. Also, I limit it to only as many parts as are necessary to help the client resolve his or her inner conflict, uh, whereas there are some variations, for example, voice dialogue, where some of the facilitators will call out the part that wants to change, but then they'll call out a protector part, they'll ask for a resource part, or I should say self, because they call themselves. <laughs> they want a resource self, a protector self, a controller self, uh, et cetera. And I found from experience, if I get too many parts participating in the resolution, it ends up becoming what I call a parts party. Yeah. And it's a confusing mess for both the therapist and the client and results in several sessions instead of only one or two uh, sessions of parts therapy to help the client resolve uh, his or her concern. Well, you know what, Roy? It seems to me that sometimes parts parties aren't parties. They're free-for-alls. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I, well I, said. I have to point out to you that, that uh, uh, we both have some students in common. Um, 
HPTI. I'm not quite sure. Could you repeat? Could you repeat that, please? Yeah. I'm hearing a lot of background noise and distortion for some reason. Yeah, somebody, there, somebody's mic was open, and I think I've just gotten that stopped. So I was saying, um, I, I, uh, you and I both teach uh, some some of the same students through HPTI and and things, and uh, yes. typically uh, I get them after you've had them. So the second project that they have to do for me is to do six step reframing, but they've been influenced by Roy Hunter, and <laughs> uh, and of course they've been influenced by me. And, uh, and I don't know why, but this uh, the one, one fellow in the last class, uh, it seemed like every, every question that he asked brought out another part and he got another name for it and stuff until there seemed to be so many, so much going on that I thought, oh my God, this client actually had come in asking for a relatively simple outcome. <laughs> and, and it was the most complex, complicated thing that I have seen. Uh, so, uh, so I, so I appreciate the note. happened to be at a workshop once. Yeah. 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 So I thought a demonstration was going to be a very simple resolution and it ended up being a very complex session. Another one, when I was working with the chain smoker who in the intake said, I'm proud to be a member of the smokers minority. Mm -hmm. I know from experience, I usually have my work cut out for me when they say that. And he also was a three pack a day person. And it only took one very short heart therapy session to resolve it. So I get surprised both ways, as I'm sure you have. Yeah, yeah. So, so now we, we've talked about it in various ways. I mean, you've talked about uh, getting access to parts and, get, and getting names for them and, and all of that. But can you, can you be a little more specific and tell us a bit about just how, how does the process work? How does it unfold? I think the best way to answer that is with an actual case summary. Okay. So uh, we'll call a client Roger and he came in to quit smoking and rejected my approach that's successful for over half of my clients, oftentimes with only uh, one session for them to quit. I devote a second session to what I call insurance by teaching them self-hypnosis for stress management. Because in the late 80s, I surveyed all my clients for five years at six months, 12 months, and 18 months because I wanted to know what my long-term success rate was. And when they backslid, I wanted to know why they backslid. While lead bowling was a common reason. Hello? Hello, we're here. While lead bowling was a common reason for backsliding back in the 80s when they had still let people smoke in bowling alleys, I found the number one reason for backsliding was stress people getting their buttons pushed. That was the number one reason more people backslid than all other reasons combined. So that's why I teach uh, one session to help the client learn how to use self-hypnosis to manage stress buttons. And if, if they're having problems, if they're rejecting the post-hypnotic suggestions to quit, or they're struggling with nasty urges, then in the third session, uh, I will basically ask the subconscious to reveal why they're backsliding. Sometimes it's obvious to use parts, sometimes it isn't. So I'll use idiomotor response questioning, which I also cover in my workshops. Uh, category, I find one of seven categories for the reason for backsliding. Uh, it's based on the seven key system that uh, David Sheik and Leslie LeCrone came up with decades ago with Charlie Yaw. Emulated, he called it the seven psychodynamics of a symptom, very similar to the seven key system, but he used slightly different names for it. And I've updated that through the years. And since building a bridge with hypnotherapy and psychology with Dr. Bruce Eimer, uh, he and I have come up with uh, a current version, which is kind of a combination of Charlie's and the one uh, that Cheek and Lacrone came up with. But basically, that will help me determine whether to use part therapy or not, which is what I did with Roger, the smoker. Mm -hmm. And after the short part therapy pre-talk, uh, which was based on my answer to your question about uh, explaining the concept of part therapy, he was comfortable with it. And by the way, if a client is not comfortable with it, but I still believe it's necessary, then I might mention that uh, the uh, psychologist from Australia, Gordon Emerson, 
who teaches a similar technique as a scientist did some research and found out that the average person has anywhere from five to 15 different ego states or parts that influence our behavior in any given calendar week. And I'm very grateful that Emerson uh, shared the results of that uh, with the whole world. Sure. So um, once the client is comfortable with it, as Roger was, and in hypnosis, I said, there's a part of you that wants to quit smoking and has motivated you to invest your time and money for these sessions. And there's another part that wants to keep on smoking. So that part of you that wants to keep on smoking uh, is a very important part and it's doing uh, what it thinks is uh, right for Roger. And you're doing a good job. I'm willing to listen. Roger's willing to listen. And when you're willing to communicate, please say the words I am here or use the guest thinker. So the part identified itself as Liberty, and I said, what job do you do for Roger? Well, uh, I want him to be liberated enough to make his own decisions because uh, his father died for our country so that we can have uh, freedom and enjoy our liberty. So uh, I want him to have the freedom to make his own decisions, and uh, it's time that he uh, not paying attention to these do-gooders that think they have a right to go around the world and tell everybody to quit smoking. Yeah. And then when I uh, called out the other part, the other part wanted to be called uh, healthy. And healthy said, well, my job is to help him make healthy decisions and mature decisions. And I don't think it's very healthy and I don't think it's mature for uh, liberty to make him smoke. Because Liberty said his job is to help him have the freedom to make some decisions. Well, then why did he make him a slave to the cigarette urges? Because is that the opposite of freedom? Mm -hmm. And when I went back to uh, Liberty, Liberty apologized. And I thought, oh, this is easy. Textbook parts therapy, piece of cake. You know, and I'm just about ready to wrap it up. But yeah. then when I uh, get into the ninth step, because I've organized parts therapy into a step-by-step -step process. So at step nine, when I asked do all of Roger's parts, I accept the terms of agreement reached here today. Uh, he verbally said yes, but the no finger moved. Mm -hmm. So it turned out that uh, a part that had not previously emerged <coughs> came out and said, uh, I'm going to object to the terms of agreement because uh, I know Roger. And he'll take all of his money that he used to spend on cigarettes and he'll either use it to pay credit cards or invest for retirement or both. And what's the fun in that? And I said, uh, well, what name do you want to be called? Well, you can call me fun because my job is to help him have fun. And I'll light a match to the terms of agreement and have him light a match to his money just like he did before unless he takes half the money that used to uh, go up in smoke and set it aside as fun money for uh, recreation. Right, nice. Freedom was very happy to have the freedom to uh, choose more uh, ways to have fun and uh, recreation, more golf, uh, a couple of movies a month, and he wanted to choose which lady uh, that Roger would ask out on a date Roger ended up leaving that office very happy. But also, while I'm thinking about smoking, if you'll let me indulge uh, everyone for a moment, mm -hmm. a case that I thought was going to be simple, which I included in the art of a spiritual hypnosis, involved another smoker. Uh, I don't remember his name, but the bottom line is uh, in the intake, he said, before we start, I want to tell you that uh, I'm an atheist, and you better dare not mention the name of God or anything spiritual in this session, because uh, I'm an atheist, and I absolutely don't want any spirituality uh, included in uh, my work with you. Mm -hmm. So he comes in for his third session after, uh, he liked the stress management session, session two, but he was still struggling with a lot of urges, and he said, it's like there's a part of me sabotaging all the good work you did uh, my first day. So he was comfortable with the concept of parts therapy, but unlike most clients, 
I was unable to get the two parts to agree to terms of agreement. They kept arguing with each other. So when I called out a third part, I said, what name or title do you want to be called? And that third part said, hire self. Hire self brought resolution within five minutes by telling the other parts what to do. And at the end of the session, I like to keep it positive because clients are still uh, in a semi-trance state after emerging from uh, a longer session. So we have to choose our words wisely. So I usually say, isn't this amazing stuff? Uh, do you like the agreement? Words to that effect. And he says, amazing isn't the half of it. I said, what do you mean? He said, I yourself was a spiritual uh, part of me. And he said, if there's a spiritual realm, there must be a God. So he comes into my office professing to be an atheist, leaves after three sessions believing in God. I had to put that one in the art of spiritual hypnosis. I was going to say, I bet, I bet this one made your book. Uh, Absolutely, it made my book. How could it not? That was pretty profound, Michael. Because if I would have brought the name of God into it, he probably would have come out of hypnosis, uh, given me a well-deserved lecture, and left and fired me as his hypnotherapist. Instead, he became a successful non-smoker and uh, lit a match to his atheism. Nice, nice. So, so listen, uh, Roy, the, the clock is moving so fast. It's already uh, about 16 minutes until nine, and we, we want to have time for some Q&A. So I've got a couple questions I'm going to ask you so that we can, get, uh, so we can get through them and make sure that people understand. Your, okay. your, course, your course is four days, so there's two days before, two days after, and I understand one of them is training in parts therapy, and the other is training to train parts therapy. Is that correct? That's correct. The first two days, the pre-conference is uh, your parts therapy workshop. So uh, any uh, hypnotherapist or serious student of hypnosis is welcome to attend that. And uh, you register at imdha.com. You don't go through me. You go through uh, the IMDHA for that or IAC. Mm -hmm. And the uh, train and parts therapy trainer will be held on Monday and Tuesday as a post-conference. And it's easy for me to remember that date because Monday is my... Monday, May 22nd is my 25th anniversary. So, uh, anyone who has training and experience with heart therapy can uh, get uh, a slight discount on the train to heart therapy trainer because the package includes all four days. So if you want to take just train to heart therapy trainer, uh, if you've previously taken my heart therapy or you've uh, used heart therapy with quite a bit of experience, then uh, you can be waved through without taking the first two days. Uh, if you are well experienced in either ego state therapy, voice dialogue, six step reframe, uh, I still suggest that you at least read uh, my part therapy text to see how I apply it a little differently than uh, your own variation. And sometimes people ask why the different variations? Well, they're different ways to get from LA to New York and the destination is more important than the journey. So six, six step reframe is a different route to the same destination of empowering the client. And Dr. Yeager, the man I told you about earlier, he neither mediates nor arbitrates. He calls out the higher uh, wisdom and intelligence, which he told me privately uh, that many of his patients believe is uh, their higher self or the spirit or Christ consciousness or Yahweh and they have profound changes and what he does is he calls the part centrum and he has centrum arbitrate so he communicates only with one part but he gets results nice. and he's done this successfully for four decades and I admire him for thinking outside the box four decades ago. Nice. So, <clears throat> so, so what's your class like? Is, is it uh, hands-on stuff? Is it a lot of lectures, demonstrations? How uh, how do you, how does the, what does the class look like? Uh, the first two days, um, it's very structured. I teach you the process step-by-step. Step. It's also approved by uh, the American Psychological Association for uh, continuing education credit. Uh, Bruce Eimer and uh, the behavior therapy uh, is uh, his uh, business, the Behavior Therapy Center, uh, is responsible for 
the content and awarding of continuing education. And it's an honor to be a hypnotherapist, having a program approved for CE for a psychologist. Uh, the train a part of therapy trainer uh, is to teach you how to teach it. And that uh, has a PowerPoint presentation and permission for you to uh, use the copyrighted information uh, that I've revised numerous times over the years. Mm -hmm. And still a work in progress because it seems like just when I think I have it the way it needs to be, I tweak it some more. And uh, one of the biggest uh, revisions in recent years is based on Bruce Eimer's work because he's a pain psychologist at a major hospital in Philadelphia. And while Charles Tevitz taught me back in 83 that you could use parts therapy for medical situations, it never occurred to me in all my years of practice to use parts therapy for chronic pain. Bruce has been using uh, parts therapy for chronic pain patients at the hospital with groundbreaking results. So uh, the nice. current workbook includes a section that uh, Dr. Bruce Eimer wrote regarding the use of heart therapy with chronic pain patients. So it's always changing. And I suppose somebody else had come up with something. Um, it is my hope that somebody who takes one of my workshops or who has already taken my part therapy training will be able to document some success with Alzheimer's as Dr. Ed Yeager did. Yeah. Well, and your, your, your programs are always so well received, Roy. So we're, we're really glad that you're going to be doing it again. And, and uh, I want to give people a chance if anybody's got any questions. And I need to remind you, uh, because of the platform that we're using here with the uh, computers and the phones, um, you heard a lot of background noise before. And that meant that we really did have to turn off everybody's microphones except for you and I. So um, rather than opening them all up again, which would... Uh, create a real a real mess <laughs> I'm sure um, if, if anybody has a question the way to do it is if you're on the telephone uh, and you press star 9 that will let me know that you have a question it raises a hand on my screen here and if you're on the computer if you look down at the bottom of your screen uh, there's a little thing that says participants and it'll pull up a participants list and if you uh, if you click on that and you see the participants list down at the bottom of it, there is also a little thing that you can click that says raise hand. So if you raise your hand, I'll know that you have a question and, uh, and then we'll open up the mic so that you can, uh, so that you can ask it and, uh, and uh, well, we, should be, uh, we should be good to go. And in fact, the first uh, question here I see is coming from Sherry and Sherry, I have just unmuted you. So uh, go ahead and ask your question. Yes, um, I'm wondering, do you ever use parts therapy for something with uh, someone has disassociative identity disorder and you're trying to integrate the personalities? That's an excellent question. I will say, first of all, I have met not one, but two hypnotherapists who recovered from DID. Uh, one of them back when it was still called MPD, multiple personality right. disorder, through the combination of regression and parts. I personally have not. I would consider it, provided I did it under supervision of a trained psychotherapist or psychologist who's experienced and trained for that specific disorder. Because uh, in essence, what both of these ladies I knew personally told me regarding their former multiple personalities was that uh, it resulted from childhood trauma and they were originally parts that used in both of the cases of these ladies the first part to become a separate personality was a protector part that uh, blocked the memories of the trauma because uh, they were too young to be able to handle the conscious knowledge of the trauma but I'll never forget this one lady I talked to in 1987 who said, the conscious me you're talking to now can remember what my father did to me in my early teens. But she said, I couldn't have uh, lived with that knowledge then because I held my father up on a pedestal. He was a minister, and I thought he was the closest thing to God you could be outside of an angel. And she had four personalities that were merged into one by a psychologist in the Los Angeles area who had studied hypnotherapy under Gil Boyne and parts therapy under Charles Stebbins. And he used a combination of regression and parts. Then I met a lady 
actually knew her for several years, didn't know she had uh, DID until um, one time we were dancing at uh, Parents Without Partners. I happened to see her there. That was before my current wife and I uh, got married. And in the middle of the dance floor, she said, six down, one to go. I said, six down, one to go what? Then she told me her story, same thing. Then in the late 1990s, I had a, a minister who was also a psychotherapist trained in uh, dealing with DID take my class specifically to learn parts therapy because he felt it was not sufficient to simply counsel people on how to live with DID. He wanted to help them uh, heal from it and integrate the personalities back into parts. Yeah, I have a daughter who has 38 parts. We quit, we actually oh, quit yeah. counting at mm. 38. It got too confusing. So uh, that's kind of what put me into hypnotherapy a few, quite a few years ago was looking, researching, trying to find some help. And I've always talked to the parts. I've always been able to talk to them. They come out, they say who they are, what they represent and what they're, what's annoying them at the time. So I'm very familiar with everything. I've just been a little hesitant on exactly how to, some of them actually say they know they're only a part of her. And some of them say, no, I am a separate human being. So it gets very complicated. This could evolve quickly into a very long conversation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I would invite you to email me privately regarding this if uh, you would like to, uh, or if you're coming to IMDHA, IAC Hypno Expo, uh, certainly uh, I'll be happy to discuss it with you further uh, at the Hypno Expo at Daytona Beach. But for the sake of others on the call, oh, well, I'd like to uh, open it up for other mm. questions. Yeah, definitely. Well, thank and you. You're welcome. And I would say to the rest of you, uh, don't use hypnosis on someone who has DID unless you do so in collaboration with his or her uh, therapist. And uh, that is a very strong professional opinion. Yeah. Now, uh, b by the way, Roy uh, mentioned uh, uh, Sherry that you can uh, can write him, and for anybody that wants to, to be in touch with him, I'm I'm about to give your email address away. I hope I do the right one. Uh, it is Roy at RoyHunter.com uh, is uh, is the way to do that. So uh, if you don't get a chance to ask your question tonight, um, that may be uh, may be an option. Um, and of course, uh, yes, I'll be happy to answer a question. Uh... Uh, for anyone that's on this call that doesn't get a chance to ask it verbally. So let's see if somebody uh, does have another question. Again, if you're on the phone and you have a question to ask, you can press star nine. And if you are um, uh, on your computer, uh, you can open up that little participants window at the bottom of the screen. And, uh, and then you will find in that window, at the bottom of that window, something that says raise hand and that will work as well. And I'm watching to see New technology, you know. Um, I, I'm really thrilled, though, to be able to do this and to be able to actually um, have you here, Roy, where people can uh, can see you. I'm very glad I've had the experience, uh, as have you, uh, doing uh, programs like this for HPTI. Mm -hmm. Well, in fact, I do a whole lot of client work with the same software. Uh, I, I've got people spread out all over the globe and... Uh, and so it's really useful to be able to connect with them on a reliable platform. Indeed. Any more questions? They don't seem to be forthcoming. We've got some, uh, some quiet ones out there, maybe just a little bit shy. But it is uh, 8.56, so we're a couple minutes away from, from the end. Uh, just, to, just to make sure um, uh, that we've kind of covered all of our bases here. Um, you did just offer a caveat here um, with regard to um, dissociative identity disorder and, and say that, uh, you know, people that uh, shouldn't be doing that without, uh, you know, without doing it in conjunction with uh, the client's uh, therapist and et cetera, et cetera. I wonder, uh, any other caveats? That is, uh, you know, when, when do you use parts therapy and when would you just not, when else might you not advise it? Well, uh, basically... I have so many years of experience in parts therapy that if it's indicated, I'm quick to use it. The way I know whether to use it or not is 
uh, if a person is struggling, I don't hardly ever use it on the first session. Let me start out by saying that. Uh, I use it if it's called for. Normally, it's not something I'll use on the first session. There are a few exceptions, and I'll give you those in a couple of minutes. But um, if a person comes in having uh, disclosed that he or she is struggling with uh, the suggestions given uh, the first one or two sessions, such as, you know, I really want this to work, but there's a part of me that is just bound and determined to open that refrigerator and uh, be a secret closet eater for my chocolate. Well, they've already identified that they have an inner conflict. So I'll jump right into parts therapy with them after uh, doing a pre-talk on it because I never use parts therapy without a pre-talk. Uh, one minute of communication is worth months of resolution because I've had a couple of clients over the years who went through many months of stress because some other uh, counselor, hypnotherapist, or psychotherapist used either parts therapy or a variation without a pre-talk. And they left that office thinking they were undiagnosed DID. I don't want somebody to go through that stress. Sure. And I remember uh, about six or seven years ago when I was teaching my full course uh, back in Seattle, Tacoma area. And about two thirds of the way through the course, I had my first class on parts therapy and, and talking about the pitfalls. And this one lady sitting in the front row burst into tears. And I said, uh, what uh, is the problem? And she said, that was me. I said, I don't remember meeting you. She said, no, I don't mean I was that client. She said, the same thing happened to me three years ago. And she said, I was stressed out for over a year, scared to get diagnosed, scared not to. And she said, uh, my uh, psychotherapist was really helping me through some issues. And yet, when uh, he used either parts therapy or some variation, I was so freaked out that even if uh, he tried to give me an explanation afterwards, uh, I was too freaked out to remember it. And she said, uh, I spent over a year stressed out wondering if uh, I needed to see a psychotherapist or psychologist or a psychiatrist for DID. And she said, you want to know what saved me? I said, what? And she held up a copy of my heart therapy book. And then she said, imagine my surprise when I found out your school was only four miles from where I live. Wow. And uh, the uh, chapter two, which was great, is she became a certified hypnotherapist and a fairly good one. Nice. And that was a successful story. But uh, she made it very clear to the whole class how much stress she went through thinking that she had uh, DID when indeed she didn't. She was simply... Uh, on the receiving end of parts therapy or one of, or one of its variations without that important one or two minutes of communication in advance of the trance. Mm -hmm. So if I determine that parts therapy is indicated through finger response questions, but I did not give the parts therapy pre-talk, I'll do ego strengthening suggestions and schedule a parts therapy for the following session. I will not do parts therapy that same day. Mm -hmm. And I would give the same recommendation to anyone using any variation, whether it's six-step reframe, ego state therapy, resource therapy, voice dialogue, uh, et cetera. Nice. All right. Well, listen, uh, Roy, you are a wealth of information and experience. Uh, gosh knows, you know, you and I and, uh, and Robert Otto and, uh, and a, a few folks uh, <laughs> have been at this for decades, not just years. Three decades now, yeah, three and a half, in fact. Um, so uh, I, I just really appreciate how much you have to offer. So for those of you who aren't really familiar with Roy or, or haven't met him yet, get yourself to the Hypno Expo and take this course. Uh, the first two days are the 17th and 18th of May. That's the days just before the weekend. Uh, and in those two days, you will learn how to do parts therapy from Roy himself. Uh, and then uh, on the 22nd and the 23rd, the two days after the conference, if you're interested in becoming a parts therapy trainer, uh, that's where you can get the information that you need and get certified to be able to teach uh, parts therapy from, from the man himself. Can I make one comment in closing? Please do. Thank you. Uh, oh, first of all, my website is royhunter.com. And regarding the uh, train to parts therapy trainer, 
Uh, the IMDHA IAC post conference is the only place in America where I teach this, and I teach it once a year as a post conference uh, at Hypno Expo. Oh. And as usual, it's always a pleasure and an honor to uh, be interviewed by you, Michael. Well, thank you so much, Roy, and uh, and everybody. It's exclusive. Uh, I act IMDHA Hypno Expo 2017. Roy Hunter will be teaching that to train the trainer course for his parts therapy only there. So we're just really thrilled and honored that you do that. Uh, that you do that, Roy, and uh, and everybody. Uh, our time has run out. So I'm going to wish you all a good evening. I am going to do something really crazy here in just a moment. Uh, thanks again, Roy. I can't tell you how much I appreciate talking with you. It's always a pleasure. Uh, I am going to unmute all of the microphones. So uh, uh, there will either be a whole lot of background noise or an opportunity for people to sort of shout out there, bye, love you, see you later, uh, and all of that good stuff. That we <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, so here goes the unmuting. And thank you so much, Roy. I'll look forward to seeing you soon. Happy New Year, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you, you very much. Happy New Year, and thank you very much. Thank you, Roy. Great presentation. Wow. Well, wait. One thank more you. Thing really quick, and pardon me for interrupting you, but this this recording will be available on the IAC IMBHA forum tomorrow. Uh, take me till about noon, probably, to get it online. So, uh, so you can get it there. And as you've been listening tonight, you can get CEUs for this call by going out to the IACT IMBHA website, whichever you are a member of, and uh, there's a place for you to claim your CEUs. So, uh, so be sure and do that as well. And we'll see you next week. We'll to George Bien. Thanks, everybody. Good night, all. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Bye.